This training module is an overview of pre-storm streamflow statistics used to analyze storm flow quality. We use the term pre-storm flow rather than base flow because the stream flow at the beginning of a runoff event commonly includes runoff from a previous event. This is training module 4.01a for the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model seldom. This presentation has 18 slides and will take about 13 minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has five learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the relation between pre-storm streamflow statistics and storm flows, the pre-storm streamflow variable, the methods used if there are pre-storm flows equal to zero, and the method used to generate non-zero pre-storm flows, and how to evaluate the risk for zero flows by using a map. This presentation is a brief overview of the technical details for estimating and using pre-storm stream flows. Please see the Federal Highway Storm Flow Report, FHWA-HEP-09-005, and the Seldom Manual, USGS Techniques and Methods 4C3, for more details. As this schematic diagram indicates, the pre-storm flow times the runoff duration is added to the upstream runoff to calculate the upstream total storm flow used for the dilution calculations in runoff quality analyses. The amount of dilution depends on the amount of pre-storm flow and the upstream runoff that occurs while the highway runoff or highway runoff BMP outfall is discharging to the stream. While there are several methods to proportion runoff and base flow, the straight line method is sufficient for planning level estimates. As V.T. Chow wrote, hydrograph separation is more of an art than a science. In stormwater quality analyses, the pre-storm flow commonly is held constant for the duration of the event. Pre-storm flow that continues during the storm may be the primary source of dilution at the beginning of the upstream runoff event. This hypothetical graph shows the cumulative percentage of the total upstream storm flow that occurs as the storm progresses. The vertical axis shows the percentage of the total upstream storm flow, and the horizontal axis shows the progression of time. The diagram shows two potential runoff durations from a small site discharging to the stream, one with a short duration, D1, and the other with a longer duration. D2. In this example, only 15% of the upstream storm flow occurs during duration 1. About 55% of the total storm flow occurs during duration 2. This graph is based on the previous diagram. The actual proportion of pre-storm flow will depend on the relative size of the two flow components. It's important to note that in this example, the pre-storm flow rate represents the bulk of the total flow at duration 1 and about half the total at duration 2 which is halfway through the upstream runoff duration. This is just an example. Depending on the relative magnitudes, the pre-storm or runoff flow may be a small part of the upstream flow that occurs while the site of interest is discharging to the stream. This schematic diagram shows the range of pre-storm flows might be wide if the definition of the minimum time between precipitation events is less than the upstream storm flow recession duration. In this diagram, precipitation pulses are denoted by the gray boxes descending from the top of the graph. Stream flow is represented by using the light blue line and the pre-storm stream flows are identified by using the gray circles. These patterns are apparent in daily mean flow data from many streams in the United States. Approved stream flow data are are reported as daily mean flows by the U.S. Geological Survey. In comparison, independent storm events are commonly defined by using hourly data and by specifying an inter-event time, which is the minimum number of dry hours between independent storm events. The minimum inter-event time may differ considerably among regions, but is generally approximated by an interval of about six hours. Theoretically, there may be as many as three independent storm events within a day if they have an event duration of one hour and a minimum inner event time of six hours during one 24-hour period used for reporting one daily mean stream flow value. Runoff events commonly are defined by the duration of the storm flow hydrograph. Pre-storm flows may include runoff from a previous storm because storm flow recession durations for many basins commonly are longer than one or more days. Estimating or simulating pre-storm flow is a two-part problem. The proportion of zero flows in the stream flow record sets the threshold for the risk of having a pre-storm flow equal to zero. The non-zero flow volumes vary logarithmically. The frequency factor method is used to generate or estimate the non-zero pre-storm stream flows by using the mean, standard deviation, and skew of the logarithms of non-zero mean daily flow data. 
the skew of the logarithms of stream flow to find the relation between the probability of occurrence and the frequency factor. If the skew is equal to zero, the random variates have a normal distribution and the stream flows would be log normally distributed. Non-zero skew values result in stream flows with a log Pearson type 3 distribution. This graph shows the pre-storm stream flows calculated by Seldom using stream flow statistics that are representative of conditions near I-81 Federal Highway Administration Research Site near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The stream receiving highway inflows at this site drains a one half square mile basin upstream of the highway site. The output flow values in cubic feet per second are shown on the vertical log scale axis. The percentage of storms in which the pre-storm flow rate was equaled or exceeded is shown on the horizontal probability axis. All three sets of data were generated by using the frequency factor method with a geometric mean of 0.73 cubic feet per second per square mile and a geometric standard deviation of 2.6. The data represented by the white diamonds was generated by using a skew of 0.71, which is representative of other stream gauges in this area. Positively skewed data are concave up on a probability plot. The data represented by the yellow triangles were generated by using a skew of minus 0.71, Negatively skewed data are concave down on a probability plot. The data represented by the red dots were generated by using a skew of zero. The black line is the theoretical distribution of points with a skew of zero. The red dots don't fall exactly on the theoretical log normal line because this is a stochastic sample of storms, not a population. The flows generated using a positive skew range from 0.05 to 35.5 cubic feet per second. The flows generating using a zero skew range from 0.027 to 9.7 cubic feet per second. The theoretical log normal values range from 0 0.015 to 8.41 cubic feet per second. And the flows generated using the negative skew range from 0.014 to 3.17 cubic feet per second. Thus, we can see that the statistics used to model pre-storm flows are important for capturing variations in receiving water flows from storm to storm. To assess the risk of zero flows, we must estimate the stream status. Perennial streams rarely go dry, intermittent streams go dry seasonally, and ephemeral streams flow only after precipitation or snowmelt. This map shows the perennial stream length as a percentage of total stream length by watershed. Dark areas have a few intermittent reaches, white areas have no perennial streams. The EPA defines an intermittent stream that naturally goes dry seasonally. Some perennial stream reaches may go dry during severe droughts. Many stream reaches may go dry if local water withdrawals are high. Because stream gauges in teeny basins are rare, intermittent streams may be operationally defined. In Vermont, a basin with greater than 0.25 square miles is classified as perennial. In Massachusetts, it's one square mile. Neither of these thresholds define the probability of zero flow, but Massachusetts has defined a 99th percentile, a zero flow fraction of 0.01, .01, about four dry days per year, as the lower bound of a perennial stream for regulatory purposes. Other states have different criteria, which may depend on local hydrology. Granado and others, 2017, calculated the statistics from more than 20,000 stream gauges active sometime during the 1901 through 2015 period. Only 31% of stream gauges, which are generally cited to measure reliable flow, had fewer than one dry day per year on average. A local map may provide an initial qualitative estimate if there is a high risk of zero flows at a runoff discharge point. Topographic maps, however, theoretically represent normal rather than drought conditions. This is a small section of a USGS topographic map showing the transition from a perennial stream, shown as a solid blue line, to an intermittent stream, shown as a dotted blue line on the map. In this example, I have highlighted the transition from perennial to intermittent by using the pink circle near the center of the diagram. We can see that the stream segment passing under the highway on the left side of the image is an intermittent stream on this map, and it is a perennial stream where it passes under the highway again in the upper center of the map. However, because the drainage area is small, the length of the perennial stream above the second crossing is small, and the maps were made by using professional judgment by a cartographer rather than a scientific study by a hydrologist, the proportion of zero flows used to model this stream crossing probably is much greater than zero. Further analysis may be warranted to estimate the ratio. This is the same area on the national map with the National Hydrography Dataset, which represents the water drainage network of the United States. This map shows more perennial and intermittent reaches than the older quadrangle map. 
Ephemeral stream beds, which only flow during storms, may show evidence of flows, but almost all pre-storm flows may be equal to zero for such locations. The exception would be for runoff events in rapid succession. The stream bed is marked by fine sediment deposits in the topographic crenulations in the image on the left, and by evidence of erosion and coarse deposits on the right. Ephemeral streams flow during runoff events. Therefore, synoptic precipitation statistics for runoff generating events may inform the threshold between ephemeral and intermittent streams in different regions. If we use the long-term average number of events per year, then the fraction of zero flows may range from 0.83 in rain zone 15 in the northwest to 0.95 in rain zones 11 and 12 in the southwest. If we use the long-term average number and duration of events, then the fraction of zero flows may range from 0.91 in rain zone 15 to 0.98 in rain zones 9 through 13. In comparison, one month of flow would be a zero flow fraction of about 0.95, and two months would be a fraction of 0.83. The local map may provide an initial qualitative estimate of the risk for zero flows if a stream crossing can be considered ephemeral. The point at which a stream becomes intermittent or ephemeral on a map is based on cartographic judgment, not necessarily hydrology. This small section of a USGS topographic map shows the transition from an intermittent stream to an ephemeral stream. The intermittent stream is shown as a dotted line. The transition from intermittent to ephemeral is highlighted by using the pink circle in the upper part of the diagram. Ephemeral streams may not be shown on U.S. topographic maps. I use pink lines following the crenulations pointing uphill to identify flow paths in this image. This example was selected from the basin along I-90 in Massachusetts where ephemeral streams are limited to small areas in the headwaters. In arid areas, however, very large drainage areas may be drained by ephemeral streams. Even with the National Hydrography dataset, some ephemeral stream reaches may not show up in humid areas. Crenulations in topography generally indicate the presence and effects of concentrated flows. Although narrow uphill crenulations are a good indicator, ephemeral streams commonly are defined as having a recognizable channel on the ground. This type of designation would require a site visit in areas with tree cover. This map shows ephemeral streams as dashed brown lines in the uplands flowing to an intermittent reach indicated by dashed blue lines that quickly transitions to a perennial stream as indicated by the solid blue line. The ephemeral stream network can be extensive in arid areas and areas of channelization are easier to see without the tree cover. In this module we learn that pre-storm stream flows may provide a substantial amount of the total dilution and the pre-storm flow statistics determines this contribution. The pre-storm stream flow variables are the proportion of zero flows and the mean standard deviation in skew of the logarithms of non-zero flows. Conditional probability methods are used to generate some storms with pre-storm flows equal to zero. Non-zero pre-storm flows are generated by using the frequency factor method with the mean standard deviation and skew of the logarithms of non-zero flows. Maps, especially the national map with the National Hydrography dataset, can be used to estimate the risk for zero flows.